Ambassador, welcome to Marrakesh, a place you know well. My pleasure. Uh, I just would like to talk to you about the terrible disturbance in Europe, which means the war, besides climate change and everything else, yeah. we have the war. I was thinking the other day some rockets fell onto Polish territory. Yeah. I was thinking if tomorrow uh, a rocket, a missile is malfunctioning, directing itself to Warsaw, crashing into Warsaw, and we have a hundred dead people. Is this a case for NATO to react, or what do we do and how do we react to such a catastrophe? Well, this is a, a difficult question, but it's a realistic question, unfortunately. So it didn't happen until now. I think there is a certain uh, discipline in a way or in another, in the sense of that it is not said officially, but there is some control on where you, you send a missile, I think, you know. If there is a, a case like the one, as you say, with many people who die only in a NATO country, there is not an automatic... Uh, NATO response? No. In the sense that Article 5 of NATO, which is common defense, says that if one party is attacked, I try to remember exactly the words, uh, the others will support this party attack. But it does not say... First of all, there are two things. You have to ascertain that there has been an attack, and a deliberate one, not a... But you can't prove that was deliberate or not? Nah, this is another issue. It's a human, human, peop, human mind have to decide, you know, <laughs> according to what is better, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, second thing, it does not necessarily mean war, because uh, this is not exactly what uh, Article 5 says. It means that uh, allied countries support the aggressed party in the best possible way. So there is a certain room for deciding exactly. You no, know, you could have uh, perhaps an ultimatum on Russia, and to have perhaps an, a Russian excuse. I don't know. I'm just creating in my mind. I mean, uh, or just say no. It is not ours. It is a mistake. And then maybe there will be not some automatic reply. So you know, there is. It is dangerous. It is risky, and more than that. The atmosphere is very bad at this moment because, you know, if these things happen in a relaxed atmosphere or normal atmosphere, there is a different way of looking at the fact. If you are in a moment of hate or in a moment of war or destroy, destroying everybody or destroying everything, then, of course, the judgment is harsher. Would you think, that, or one would hope, that there is communication, secret communication or different communication with the Russians and with the Ukrainians, or you think it is dead between the two? There is no communication I, constructive? I, I think, you know, uh, there are different levels, you know, I think. On an official level, I don't think that there is communication. And they pretend, both sides, that there is no communication, by the way. It's like a sort of an official line, if they correctly understand what is going on. But you have also to think that in that part of the world, in that part of Europe, in fact, Russians and Ukrainians have been very much mixed in the past, very much so, even split families and so. So that there is some communication at the lower level, I think it is possible. It will not be logical, if you like, because you can have somebody in Ukraine who have a brother or a sister or a cousin or an uncle in Russia, and they could say things to each other. But that would be more an accidental communication, yeah. uh, not the, the structured no. one no, response. Structured, so now Putin talks about, at the temps en temps, he talks about nuclear strikes. Is that feasible, possible, or would you be afraid he could even try in the desperate situation to use it? You know, uh, I think that in, in a normal situation it's unthinkable to speak about a nuclear weapon because it would destroy Russia itself, you know. And then the wind is deciding where the smoke is going, you know, and not Mr. Putin or you or me. So it is really a very hazardous uh, sort of, uh, of uh, act. 
But nevertheless, you know, I am, uh, the, the older I, I, I become, the less I believe in uh, rationality of man, you know. Uh, because... Uh, no, the war itself is not rational as it is now. No, exactly. And then, of course, uh, you have some time, you see things from your own point of view. You are detached from reality. This is why, you know, in dictatorships, it is always very dangerous. Uh, because... Uh, uh, nobody speak to the dictator, or perhaps even the closest collaborators don't say exactly the truth because they don't want to be removed or... They want to stay alive. Yeah. They want to stay alive. Exactly. So, you know, this is a very dangerous, this is a very dangerous... So I don't think, you know, if you ask me under a reasonable assumption, there will be no use of, of nuclear weapons. If there is a desperate case, of course, I cannot rule it out. Nobody can, I mean... Nobody can. But of course, it didn't the, 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 the following question is, should the West react in a similar way? I don't think so. Because uh, if you add a nuclear weapon to a nuclear weapon, then you have a nuclear third world. And the planet, as we know it, will probably disappear. You know, I was, uh, uh, I was working in the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs in 1986 on the European desk when um, there was the Chernobyl accident, you know, and it was completely different from what we are talking about now. But I remember very well that the discussion among government, among European governments, was uh, what kind of implication for the population can you eat salad coming from, you remember that? It was a wild boar. Yeah, you know, so it was really, it, it, it was an accident, you know, happening far away in Chernobyl. But in European uh, public opinion, it was not like COVID, but mm, it was really, there was alarm. So can you imagine now a real nuclear bomb? What kind of disruption it will create? So far, the European nations have reacted to the war and all the consequences of it relatively reasonable. There are no demonstrations or very little, you know, some people who are excited. How long can you ask the people to accept the sacrifice for Ukraine? Ukraine, which is sacrificing itself also. It is a very good question that implies different sets of answers to that. Uh, because, uh, first of all, we hear all the time, uh, everybody says, even the American administration, we will negotiate when the Ukrainians will tell us and according to their will. This is nice from a moral point of view. It is, a, it is, also, uh, it is also an obligation that is not perhaps a perfect obligation to keep because the Ukrainians have their own way of looking at things, perfectly justified, but perhaps in the name of a superior interest, you can say, well, okay, now you know, try like to find some compromise because it will be bad for us and also for you in the end because we have to reconstruct Ukraine from zero. How much it, it would take? How many years? How much money? How much suffering? So, you know, this is... This is uh, one thing which is uh, important uh, to keep in mind. On the other hand, uh, for the time being, the European public opinion, as you say, is surprisingly resisting, surprisingly. Be because, you know why? Because the governments have been rather solid. Bizarre again, huh? unbelievable. <laughs> Our governments, we don't always think they are the best of the world, but <laughs> in this case, they are very... And if you take even my country, because of course everybody speaks about this, your own uh, fears, you know, um, autumn has been milder than usual, we have less hours of heating in our houses, but we can survive. Eh? It's not that you are desperate, you know. You say, the hell the war, of course. <laughs> and you can maybe even say, wow, oh, Ukraine, why don't they stop? You know, something like that. But, but you still resist. So I don't know. It depends on the, the, how long the winter will be, I think. It will depend on the overall economic situation, if inflation continues to be on, if the price of energy is slowing down, as it seems under certain conditions. So, you know, it is something which is not, uh, not in the cards yet. So let's hope that your words in God's ears, that all works well, no nuclear war and no 
terrible disasters to come. Thank you very much. Well, you know, sir, uh, by, I give you this kind of answers because I think that all this is so illogical, you know, so illogical that uh, I cannot believe <laughs> that we, we can be as stupid as to have a third world war because of this. Be yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Great, great pleasure. <laughs>